on and off the field. I mean, you're meeting with us. This is more times I think than we've talked to you since the whole time you've been here. Um, yeah, phone's been going crazy. So um, to everybody I didn't get back to, um, to all the tweets I can't read, all the supporters, um, thank y'all for the support. So yeah, it's been a lot, um, but definitely grateful for everybody that's supporting, even those people who, you know, are hopping on a bandwagon now. Um, I, I do still um, appreciate them because they push me, they motivate me as well. So um, this week has been good, the last couple games, and we're just trying to continue to stack and build off of what we have now. Zero, Zero um, you know, guys on track scholarship, I guess they can't play football. Did you even try? Did you ask, hey, can I, can I try to play? Um, yeah, I, I went, a, went a few times to try to get on the team, and I thought I was going to be able to play, even participate in some of like the off-season workouts and all of that, all not to be able to do it. But I was, I was grateful for my track scholarship, and I didn't want to just like somebody said, I wasn't going to just hop in the portal. Um, Coach Benny, I think, said that um, I wasn't going to hop in the portal and transfer. So after that first denial, and they told me it would be like two years when I, before I would be able to play because of the SEC rules, then I tried to go back, and then it was more stuff. But I just didn't let it deter me from the ultimate dream that I had from being a little boy, always wanting to get to the NFL. Had a lot of stops in the NFL, all practice squad uh, up till now. What's uh, what changed? What finally clicked? Do you think for you here? And uh, were there times that you, you wanted to give up? I think it was um, the culture of the people around here um, that they just believed in me. They saw something that they wanted to nurture. I think um, VA said it. Um, he saw a talent in me. It might not have been ready at the moment, but they ultimately took a chance on me. Um, they had Seattle, who initially saw the talent and thought that it just didn't work out. And I think every step along the way, it was people who gave me a chance and that ultimately developed me into I, who I am today, the way I view the league, the way I prepare, the way that I work. So I think each step along the way, helped me and catapulted me up into who I am today, man, it just began to click. It took some time to be able to know everything that was going on in the playbook and read defenses and um, just stick. I think it, like for me being the person who want to do it, obviously I thought that I should be up there right now, but it's hard to take a chance on somebody who you don't know, who you're not positive if they're going to step up in the way that you want them to do, who has no experience. It's easier to go with a guy who had a lot more experiences, three, four years of college, versus a guy who hasn't caught a football or ran a route um, in five or six years. So um, maybe I thought that I was ready, um, but I knew that I eventually would be ready, the work being put in and all of those things. Did you ever have any doubts though? I just trust God that he didn't give me a vision of being where I was or where I am. And so sometimes, you know, I was like, man, I can go and get a job and I wanna be, have some st stability more than bouncing over everywhere and not knowing what's going on. but. I still have my vision on the goal that I set before myself. So how different has it been going from running the, the, the scout teams to now being heavily involved in the team? <laughs> um, scout team, you don't have to do too much thinking. You read off a card and you just go. Um, but the way it do prepare you is you're going against the first team defense. So you're getting the best look. You're giving them a look, but you're also getting the best look. And I think it gives you appreciation for the game when you're sitting on the side watching and Carlton and Dean and Sean are locking up defenders and 
you were kind of getting open on them at practice. So you kind of feel like, okay, uh, maybe I did my job. So I think now being able to prepare for the week to week and prepare to play for a game, I can get out there and think about stuff more. And it, it's, it's ultimately more fun to me. Um, I feel fulfilled more being able to play. What was it what did like you? hearing your number called uh, at that New Orleans game, the first one, the one on, on October, October 31st, right? Like, it, it, we hadn't seen you out there, and then all of a sudden you're the guy that's coming up with, with that huge touchdown. What was that like for you? Uh, were there butterflies when you knew you were going to be the guy? I don't know if it was. I, I was excited to be home and play against the Saints. It's kind of like it was, a, it was a rival game for Tampa Bay, but it's also – kind of personal for me too. I think I had a really good preseason with them um, the year that they released me. Um, so in a way it's like a revenge game for me. I, um, I always wanna beat them, especially because my whole families are Saints fans and everybody. So it, it feels good. Like if we were to beat them, and so it's, it's, it's cool. Um, it was a moment last year, we we're out here at practice and it was like, to me, it was slippery out there. I slipped down on one, then he threw me a ball and it was in the sun and I was making excuses. And I was like, man, the ground. And he's like, it's a perfectly laid ground or whatever being hard on me. And then he throws me a ball and it's in the sun and he's like, you know, I don't need no excuses, you're an NFL receiver. And then it was a moment, like I kind of put my head down, I'm like, like kind of not in a way, but in a way defeated, I was like, man, he's, you know, being too hard on me. But then right after that, he came back up. He said, the reason why I'm so hard on you is because you have this talent and I just want to pull that out of you. And I see that in you and I just want you to see that in yourself. And from that moment, I knew he felt something in me and all it took was me getting out there every day and him actually being able to throw me the ball to earn that ultimate trust. Sarah, what was, um, what was, what was your major? What would your fall back real world job been if this if the football didn't work out? Um, I was, I was Kinesi human movement with, um, a focus. I was pre-med at first and then I went pre-PT. So I was going to be a, a physical therapist if, I wouldn't have got into school. Did you get a degree? Did you graduate? Yeah, I graduated. Did, did being an elite athlete, track, professional athlete, that had to have translated, right? I mean, all that time that you spent, the work ethic, some solitary moments, I bet. This is, I know there's a team aspect to track too, but like, how has that kind of allowed you to do this? In other words, that there's a background, there's a foundation that you built there. Yeah. Um, just always been a hard worker from a little kid. Also always won, like I won in every, every level. So I think that's, that's a thing too, like all the way back from playground, I won in middle school, we won championships in high school. I won state championships, went to state championships in college, I won. So I think all that winning mentality, like I, I always say like winning is like the worst thing to me. I'd probably rather not be loved than to lose. I hate losing so much. So I think that's the motivation too. I just don't want to lose. I don't want to fail. Um, so I think that's what translates. It's been a roller coaster this year, obviously, for the team, you know, winning the, the Super Bowl back in February and now seeing, you know, so many injuries on this on this team and then Antonio Brown. How, how, what's your pers perspective just on, on just how this team is handling the distractions that they've had? Yeah, I think I think it's like we always talk about. I think y'all hear it a lot. Y'all write about it. It's the next guy up. Um, and I think it's the way that everybody approaches the game, the way that from um, the lowest guy on the practice squad all the way up to the best guy on the roster, everybody comes and takes this serious. It don't matter how much we joke around or play. Um, the game is serious to us because um, it's not just us who are relying on it. it's the next guy, it's his family. And I think as everybody cares about everyone in here, 
So that's why we we're able to be the next guy up and ultimately do what we do. You said Todd McCart on you. Uh, that was a practice in 2020 or during camp in 2020? Yeah, I was doing a, it was a practice in, um, in 2020 during the season. And um, what is it like now that you have, have moved into one of the bigger roles uh, preparing for games? Because you were picking up the speed really quickly, I feel like, and kind of settling into to this role. Uh, what, what were those practices like with him? What were the conversations like with him? How many extra reps were there? Um, I don't know if we did a lot of, a lot of extra reps and stuff, but we've been preparing from the beginning, from last year. I'm kind of in that same position that I played the Z. Um, so being able to see like the runs and going over that with my coaches and stuff like that has been more like some, the fir very first week we met more than anything, which was like in the mornings and in the afternoons, just because they know that it was gonna be a bigger role. You and your coaches? Me and my coaches. Last year, uh, you had the help the ball go off the helmet. You you owned that. You you put it on your, your social media. Um, what, why'd you do that? What, is that something that kind of that drove you? I don't know if it drove me. I thought it was like it was something that happened, and people made fun of it. And after the fact, I thought it was funny too. As much as people made fun of it, I mean, it sucked that it become a meme and people talk trash about you and stuff like that. But I don't think that I let it define me. And I think that was the point of it. It wasn't the people who were saying what they were saying. That didn't really get to me. It was kind of more like I have a sense of humor too. Um, but this is what I work hard to do. And this is the product of who I am now. What caused that, do you think? What caused the mess, do you think? Whatever it was, I don't know. It was a it was a windy day. <laughs> I don't know. Gerald, so, so much of the last two years for you have been scout team, show team, your Tyree Hill for a week. How, how cool is it to think right now there's somebody at Carolina's scout team that's simulating zero grace and trying to show your speed? Um, it's cool. That's cool. Um, hopefully they're working hard and ho hopefully they get their chance. When I was growing up, I kind of was, I don't, I don't know if I even paid it. I was good at track. Like I went to what the Hershey relays when I was 12 and yeah, in Pennsylvania and went to like the championships and all of that. But I, I don't think that I was really like a track fan to pay attention to who I like. Obviously like the big names, Tyson Gay, Usain Bolt and all of those guys um, were cool, but I don't think that I was an idol. I guess every sport that I played and I wanted to go to the highest level. So I wanted to go to the Olympics. I wanted to go to the NBA um, and the NFL, obviously, but th that's probably it. You wanted to be the, the guy that people idolized. Um, no, you're trying to trick me. <laughs> I, want, I, want people, I want people to look at me and my story and to feel like, it's nothing that can't be put in my way that I can't do. Um, people can say no. People can try to deny me, but if if I have my mind set for it, then I can do it. And that's that's what I want people to take from me. I don't want people to idolize me. You mentioned uh, Tom being hard on you. on you. Did you ever imagine playing with Tom Brady? And when he's being hard on you, were you looking at him going, this is Tom Brady telling me this stuff? Um. I never imagined playing with Tom Brady. Um, I thought maybe he'll be retired by the time I play. Um, but I think it's, it's pretty awesome that the greatest quarterback of all time is giving me tips on how to be a better player. And it started from day one when he got here, you know. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.